Hi, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode of Seymour Educate Podcasts. Today, we're going to take a look at um, how to create websites. Uh, we know here in Pickerington, that's one of the biggest things our teachers are looking for to do over the summer. And we're trying to prepare them to, uh, to create websites using Google Sites, getting away from first class um, websites that we've used in the past. So today, on this episode, we're going to take a look at how to create Google Sites um, for your classroom, how to add multiple pages, what some websites should look like, and so on and so forth. So today, before we get started, we are doing this podcast a little bit different today. Um, I've got behind me, I've got a fancy little green screen, so now I'm not down in the little box anymore. Uh, and I can move myself around and change some things around, so it looks a little bit different today. We're trying some new technology, so we'll see how things go. Alright, so let's get to today's episode of Google Sites. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to load or launch um, uh, Google Chrome. Uh, it does work a little bit better in Google, Google Chrome. And you're going to go to sites.google.com. Now with this, you want to make sure that you're logged in. Um, log in through your school account so your picture, your image should be showing up up here in the corner. That way everything's just stored and everything's saved and so on. This page here will bring you to any of the Google um, sites that you have already created. If you've never created a Google site before, that's going to be completely blank. All right. So you're going to start over here with create. And you're going to click on that button. And with this here now, you have a couple different options. You can start from a completely blank template, or you can browse a gallery. And inside of this gallery, it is going to give you different templates of different things that have already been created um, or things that uh, Google has already provided for you. So if you want something that's a little bit fancier than maybe you could design real quick, um, you could use any of these. Um, some of the uh, templates do require you to fit your information into their template. So it's kind of one of those things. What do you want? Do you want something that's, gener that's generic and something that anybody could create or something that maybe is your own? So I'm actually going to start with a brand new um, page. And I'm just going to click on blank template. And we're going to name your site. Name your site something that is familiar with you. Once you name your site, though, you cannot change the name of your site. So I'm just going to call this one practice1234. Um, and as you will know, this will change down here. So this is going to be your URL. So whatever you call your site, that's going to show up in your URL. This is what you'll you'll link to the school's website. This is what we'll add on to give it to the kids, uh, so on and so forth. You can go down here. You can pick a very generic theme if you want. So different colors and stuff are already set for you. I'm not going to select a theme. And then under more options, you have a few other things if you want to do site categories and site description. So this would be like tag words or something like that. So if you want to be able to find it easier um, on, uh, on Google or, or on any search engine, you'd add search category or site categories there. And site description, you could just go Mr. Seymour's webpage for PLSD if you wanted to. Okay? I'm going to leave both of those blank for right now just because this is a practice one for me. So we're going to hit create and it will create a completely blank Google Sites page for us. It won't look very exciting, and there it is. We're ready to go, okay? Now, there's not a lot here, so we've basically we've got to refine this and make this our own website, okay? So along the top, you have four different buttons. The first one is your edit button. This allows you to actually go in and edit uh, the page. This one here is create a new page. So you have your home page. You can create additional pages, and those additional pages, as you add them, will show up over here. Okay. You've also got your settings uh, or more actions, and then you've also got your share. So if you'd like to use this, let's say you're doing some co-teaching and you want one of your other teachers, your co-teacher, to be able to utilize this, then you could share this back and forth, and they could both utilize it, just like anything else with Google has the share abilities. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into gears. And when I go into gears, I get a whole bunch of stuff. All right, I get revision history. That means you can go back. If you automatically deleted something, you can go back and take a look at it. Page settings, you can print. You can copy a page if you wanted to. Uh, templates, 
site layout, manage sites, permissions, so on and so forth. These right here are the two main ones that you're going to do, edit site layout and manage site. So let's take a look and edit site layout. When you do this, it starts to give you the different parts to your website. So you've got a header, which is this part up here at the top. You've got a sidebar, which is this over here on the end. And then you've also got a horizontal navigation, which is not turned on, but if we turned it on, um, it would give you this that would go across the top. Okay. Also, you can add a custom footer. So that goes down here to the bottom. I would be careful with how you have your navigation set up. I would either do it with the sidebar here, or I would do it across. I would not have both of them in. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the horizontal navigation. Okay. So get rid of this tarp, top part here. And then I'm going to go into where it says sidebar. And the little pencil here is what allows you to edit. So if you click on that, it allows you to say, do you want it on the left or do you want it on the right? And how wide do you want it? And it's in pixels. So right now it's 150 pixels. So if you want it bigger, if you want it smaller, you can make those changes. I'll leave it just exactly as it is. And then if I wanted to go into header, I could go into header. Um, I could use a different logo. Um, I could set, this is the dominant logo or here for the domain. We would like for you in Pickerington to keep the Pickerington logo on there somewhere uh, so that it's on your main page. So that way people know that you're going to a, a Pickerington uh, website. So we're gonna leave everything alone as it is there. And then down in the custom footer, if I want to add something to that, so let's say I wanted to say, you know, Brian Seymour, and then I wanted to add in my email address, and then I wanted to add in the phone number of the district office, okay? And then I can change this around a little bit if I wanted to center them on every page, if I wanted to bold it, if I wanted to, you know, make it Pickerington purple, uh, I can do that. Oh, we don't want that. Okay, so then what will happen is that will pop up and that will show up on every single page then. So no matter how many pages we make, my contact information will be at the bottom of every single page. Okay, when we're done with that, we've set up our, our sidebars and our headers and our, and our custom footers. We're going to hit close. We're now back to our main page. So now as you can see, this has now been added to the bottom of the page. All right, we're going to go back into here and we're going to go back into manage site now. So we were in edit site layout, now we're in manage site. And from here, now you can start to add in some more information. So here's your site categories again, uh, your site notice. This will show up once for each time that somebody shows up. Uh, so if you're a teacher and you wanted to put something like test is tomorrow or please bring this with you, you can pop that up and it'll actually pop up um, with more details. Um, site descriptions, that can go there. Um, and then over here to the side, you've got recent site activity. This is where you can take a look at how many times it's been saved or so on. This is a brand new page, so it's not, nothing's really there. Pages, uh, this is how you can move pages around a little bit. Um, so if you wanted, say if you create another page and you wanted it above home, you could do that. Attachments, this would be any kind of attachments that you've added. Page templates, it would be the five different types of, of pages that um, Google allows you to use. So you've got announcements, you've got a file cabinet, a list, a start page, and a web page. Most of what you're going to do is a standard web page your front page is your start page and then if you're going to store say you want to store pdf copies of homework or assignments or what have you uh, file cabinet would be a good place to store those because it's just for file storage so you could put all of your pdfs right into there all right um, announcements if you want to do some kind of a mini blog um, you could do those in there as well okay app scripts you don't really need to worry about deleted items don't really need to worry about the one that you'll probably need to worry about the most is this one called themes font colors and fonts this is now where you can go in and you can actually start to change the colors you can change the fonts you can change the sizes so on okay so 
the entire page, so this is broken down by a couple different things. So you have entire page, you have site header. So if I went into site header and I said I wanted to change that to a purple color, you can change that. Now the header is completely changed. Um, if I want to change the image, I can change that. Once again, we're asking that you please keep the Pickerington logo on there somewhere. Content area, I can change content area down here. Same thing, change the text. Let's change the font, um, background, sidebar, and horizontal navigation. Okay, I'm going to leave everything as it is. Um, I would add to the preference that if you're going to create a website, stick with a dark color if you've got a light color background. Okay, um, some of the the yellows and oranges and greens and things like that when you get into the neonish colors are really hard to see uh, by a lot of people. So if you're doing something that's a white background with yellow, um, that's really not going to work very well. Okay. So once you're done with that, hit save and that will save any of your changes that you've made to managing your site. Okay. Now I'm ready to go in and start adding um, to my web page. And when I'm ready to go in and start adding to my web page, I'm just going to go here and I'm going to go back and that will send me back to my practice, my, my website that I'm creating, and I'm going to click on the pencil. And when you click on the pencil, the pencil now allows you to start editing. Okay. Before you start editing, you want to figure out what the layout of your website is going to look like. So if you go up here, you'll notice that these things have popped in. One of them is called layout. And layout allows you to uh, change the way that this website looks. So as you can see, this website has one column it would just continue to go down, 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 down as you go through things. But let's say I wanted something where it was next to something else. So then I could do something like a two column. So now I've got two boxes here. Okay. If I wanted to, I could do three. So maybe you've got three classes that you want to talk each one uniquely about or three different subjects that you do. You could also add one column with a top piece. So now you notice that we've got a top piece here main content and then a bottom piece. If you wanted that with two columns, you could do that. If you wanted it with three columns, you could do that. If you want a left sidebar, you can add those to here as well. And then if you wanted a right sidebar, you could add those as well. Okay? It really just depends on how you want your web page to look. What do you want it to do? All right. What do you need it to do? Um, so I'm going to go back and I'm just going to hit um, two columns with a top and a bottom sidebar just so you guys can kind of see what it looks like okay now there's some other pieces up here that you can do as well here's your insert this is where you can insert all of your different pictures your links table of contents if you know how to do HTML you can add HTML boxes to this and then you've also got all of your Google pieces you've got your calendar you've got drive you've got Google Plus you've got groups you could add a Hangout button in here if you wanted to use Hangout for your kids, maps, YouTube videos, so on and so forth. So lots of different things that you can add into your website to, to make it your own and, and do what you want to do with it. All right, here's all of your different formatting. You can create a table. And then if you need some additional help, there's a really good help um, menu here to give you some ideas. You've also got all these pieces and parts here, so you've got um, your uh, different fonts. You are limited to some specific Google fonts. Um, size, all of your different colors and bold and italics, numbers. Alright, so whenever you're ready, all you just do is you start typing in. So if I wanted to change this to welcome to Mr. Seymour's, I used to be a science teacher, so science class. And then if I wanted to, I could go down here and I could say that this I used to teach earth science. And then the other class that I taught was astronomy. So I could, whoops, astronomy. So I could have two different things over here. And then I could go up here and I could say, please see the information below pertaining to the different courses that I teach. And then you can add in here. So now if I wanted to add in some information, maybe I add a little bit of a description of what earth science is and what astronomy is 
And then I, from there, I go down to maybe I need, since it's the beginning of the year, um, required supplies that we want people to go out and buy. Um, but you can continue adding in as much as you want. As you can see, the box will grow as you start adding it into it. So now let's say, you know, this looks kind of nice, but I really want a picture of something that I can add into each of these boxes. So I could go out, do a Google search for, let's say, Earth Science. And I find an image. And I'm like, okay, I like this one. So we could pull this one off. So I just basically pulled that one off onto my, onto my uh, desktop. And now I want to insert that image. And I want to insert it right there. So you put the cursor where you want. You go up to Insert, Image. And then you have to upload that image. So I'm going to find that image. It's on my desktop. And there it is. Open that up. Allow it a couple seconds to load. And then once it's loaded, it should show an image of it right here. And then I can click on OK. Now, that got huge. We obviously don't want anything that big. So you can actually change the size of it right here. So I can make it small, I can make it medium, I can make it large, or I can make it the original size. So I'm going to make it small just because I want something familiar in there. And then I'm going to hit, I want it centered. Okay. Now, that's really all of the editing you have. There's no ability to crop. There's no ability to get rid of some background. So if you want to do anything with the picture, you have to do that before you put it into um, Google Sites. So you could do that in um, Apple Photos. You could do it in Photoshop. Depends on what uh, you're familiar with. So if I hit X, whoops, kind of have to hit Save. So we'll say OK, load, and I'm here. Okay. So now when, you get, when you're there, you just click out, and now I've got a picture in my website. Okay. So let's say I wanted to add a link, and let's say we're going to talk about earthquakes right off the bat. So I'm going to put in earthquake information, just something as a placeholder. Go back up here, and I want to say current earthquakes. Okay. So here's a USGS website that has all the different earthquakes that have happened recently. I could go up here, I'm going to copy the URL, go back to my website, I'm going to click here and highlight, and I'm going to go up to this little thing that looks like chains, and this is add the link. If I want to go to add a link, I'm going to hit web address, I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to say I want this opened in a new link or a new window so that way my page still stays open but it's a new page now and click on OK. Okay, And now that's been linked. Okay, So as we do this, uh, drafts are saved but they're only saved as drafts. So we do have to hit save. It's kind of a counterintuitive to the rest of Google. So I'm going to hit save just to save this and see what it looks like. And now there's my website. So a little bit more getting there to where I want it to be at. Let's now say I want to add a new page. So now let's say I want to add a page for Earth Science and I want to add a page for Astronomy. That way I can put assignments on there. I can put uh, a URL to my calendar, so on. Uh, so I'm going to go up here to Create Page. And when you do that, it says, what's your page? So I'm going to say Earth Science. Okay. And it's going to ask, what do I want as a web page? Do I want a web page? Do I want an announcement? Do I want a file cabinet? Do I want a list? Or do I want a start page? Majority of what you're going to do is you're going to do a web page. Now, something else I want to point out to you is this automatically creates the URL for you. If you put a space, so there's a space here in between Earth and Science, it automatically puts a, a dash uh, in between there. So if that's OK with you, if you don't want that dash, get rid of the space. Um, it will look a little bit funky, I guess, when you pull up your actual web page. Now, here's the next thing you need to figure out is, do I want to put it at the top level? That means when you look on the side, everything will be lined up nice and neat. If you put it underneath this, 
it will be tabbed over. Okay. I kind of like the tab over because then that way it designates what's the home page because it's the one that's always farthest to the left. So I'm going to hit create page and it's going to create a brand new page for me. Okay. And now you can see here, here's my home page. Here's my earth science page that I'm adding right now. Okay. And once again, you've got the same, same exact type of functions. You've got all of these different layouts. You've got all the different types of inserts. Okay? So this is where I could go in and say, I want to put in my calendar. I want to go in and put a video in. All those different parts. All you do is hit the cursor wherever you want, go up to insert, click on whatever it is that you want, follow the directions or the steps through, and it'll add in your different um, pieces and parts to that. Okay? So if I go back here now, if I hit save, I want another page. Now this time I want a page for astronomy. So I'm just going to call this one astronomy. I want a web page and I want to put it under, but I want to choose a different location. I want to put it under here so it's even with earth science. So if I do that and hit create, you will now notice that I've got welcome to, I've got an astronomy page, and I've got an earth science page. You can have as many pages as you want, I believe. Um, I've never seen anybody's website go with that they have so many pages that Google says, nope, no more pages. Okay? So add to it, create it, make it your own. Um, it's one of those things where I really can't tell you this is the way it should look because you want it to be what's best for you and what's best for your kids. All right. I will recommend watch the colors. That's usually the biggest point point that gets people confused is just I can't read whatever the font color is or I can't read the font because it's too small or it's too big and it gets pixelated. Okay. Think about the grand majority of our kids are going to be looking at this on an iPhone or a mobile device. Okay. They're not going to be looking at it on the computer. So I would recommend every so often you take a look at your own website through um, uh, through a mobile device. That way you have some ideas of what it is. Okay? So when you're completely done and you're ready to link it to your website, all you have to do is go up here, copy this URL, go into your bio page that we've created for you on the website, and link that to it. Okay? Now a couple things that I was thinking is, as we're doing this is you know, a, a brand new website, it, it, is, it is a big endeavor. It is going to take some time to be able to do this. There is absolutely no expectation that your website is perfect and polished for day one of school. It's going to be something that's going to grow and change and, 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 and be modified all the way through school. That's what's kind of unique about, about a website is it doesn't have to have everything right there to get started with. So put the information that you need, maybe the kids need for the first week, maybe the first two weeks. Put your philosophy of education on there, put your contact information on there, those types of things, and just get ready for the start of school. Don't feel that you have to do everything for day one, okay, or, or for the entire school year. Just get ready for that first week, or maybe even the first two weeks of school, just depending on what it is that you have. The other option that you have is some of you have your um, first class websites that are still up. They're still up until August 1st. So if you have information that you want off of those sites, just copy and paste them right in here into the Google sites. There's no, there's no point in reinventing the wheel if you've already got content that you like on the first class website. Just copy and paste it right into here. Okay? So please let me know if you have any questions on Google sites. I'll be happy to help you. Um, I hope that uh, this was uh, short enough and informative enough to, to get you to understand how to use the basics of, of Google Sites, and I uh, hope you enjoy. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and uh, enjoy.